I'm going to do an experiment on how you can test for a cation in a solution. So for you to test for a cation in a solution, you use these two solutions. You use sodium hydroxide and ammonia. And how you use these two solutions is that you just place a portion of that solution that you have been told to identify the cation into the test tube. After you have placed a small portion of that uh, solution, then you place a small portion of sodium hydroxide into that test tube. Then after you do that, you, you write your observation. You record your observation somewhere. Then the second thing that you're supposed to do, you need to add excess of sodium hydroxide into that same test tube where you are adding a small portion of the solution that you have been told to identify the cation, the cation present and a, sm a small portion of sodium hydroxide. So you are supposed to add excess of sodium hydroxide to that same test tube. That's the second procedure. Then after you do that, you write your observation or you record your observation somewhere. Then you get another clean dry test tube. Uh, for the uh, for the other cream dried test tube, you place a small portion of that solution that you have been told uh, to, identify, to identify the metal into that test tube. Then you place a small portion of ammonia into that same test tube. Then you record your observation. After you have done that, then you add excess of ammonia into that, uh, into that test tube. Then you record your observation somewhere. Then you are going to use that observation. Uh, you are going to use those observations that you have found after doing the experiment to identify the cation present in that solution by using the qualitative analysis table. So I have the qualitative analysis table and I'm going to just give one example. So for example, if uh, you have been given a solution that is containing uh, uh, the aluminium ion, you, you are going to identify that after placing the aluminium ion, a small portion of the aluminium ion into the test tube, and a small portion of sodium hydroxide into that same test tube that is containing the aluminium ion, you are going to have a white precipitate. And when you add excess of uh, sodium hydroxide into that same test tube, you are going to observe that uh, the white precipitate will turn to a colorless solution, which means this, uh, this ion, the aluminium ion, is soluble in excess, giving a colorless solution. And uh, the effect with uh, aqueous ammonia, we are going to discover that after adding a small portion of uh, the ion containing the aluminium ion with a small portion of uh, ammonia into that, into the test tube containing a small portion of uh, aluminium, we are going to have a white precipitate. And when you add excess of uh, ammonia into that test tube, the white precipitate will remain the same or it will be insoluble in excess. In that way, you are going to identify that uh, the cation present in solution in, uh, for example, if the, if that solution was like uh, solution A, uh, the cation present in solution A was aluminium because you are going to use your observations uh, and you are going to use your observations and the qualitative analysis table to identify the cation. So the most important thing here that you're supposed to know is that uh, <coughs> when you're testing for the cation, you just use sodium hydroxide and ammonia. And uh, for me, I'm going to do an experiment on how I can test for the, uh, the cation is present in solution J and K using the procedures that I've just saying. And for this experiment, And for this experiment of solution J, K, sodium hydroxide and ammonia, this is because I know when I'm testing for uh, the cations only, I'm supposed to use uh, sodium hydroxide and ammonia, and I have some test tube, and I also have a test tube black. So for me to identify the cation present in solution J, I'm going to add a small portion of solution J into the test tube, Then I'm going to add a small portion of sodium hydroxide into the same test tube. So this is what I'm getting. I'm getting 
Hebrew perspective. So I'm going to write my observation on the, on the chalkboard. Uh, my first observation. So my first observation is that uh, I have a blue perspective and I know that uh, I'm supposed to add excess of sodium hydroxide into the same yes, too. So I'm going to add excess of sodium hydroxide. As you can see here, my blue precipitate remains the same. So my observation, I'm going to try it, my blue precipitate remains the same. Then I'm going to get another cream dry test tube. I'm going to place a small portion of solution J into the test tube. Then I'm going to place a small portion of uh, ammonia into the same test tube. And here my observation is that I'm getting a blue precipitate. So I'll write it down. The blue precipitate will have been formed. A blue or a blue precipitate was formed. Then I'm supposed to add excess of sodium hydroxide. So here when I add uh, excess of sodium hydroxide, um, I discover that uh, the blue precipitate has turned to a dark blue solution. So I'll write uh, the blue precipitate has turned to a dark blue solution. So for solution K, uh, then, then I'll go to solution, or for so, sorry, not for solution K, but for solution J, I'm done. Then I'll go to solution K. So for solution K, I'm going to add a small, small, push, a small portion of uh, solution K into the test tube. Then I'm going to add a small portion, a small portion of uh, sodium hydroxide. As you can see here, I'm having white precipitate. So my observation, I'm going to try white precipitate has been formed. Then I'm going to add excess of sodium hydroxide into the same test tube containing a small portion of sodium hydroxide and the solution K. And here in observation, I'm getting a colorless solution. So my observation is going to be written as uh, the white precipitate has turned to a colorless solution. Then I'm going to get a dry cream test tube. I'll add a small portion of solution K. Then I'll add a small portion of uh, and my observation here I'm getting white precipitate. Then I'll add excess of ammonia. I've run out of ammonia. I'm just going to put some. I'll 
press excess of ammonia to the test tube. As you can see here, the white precipitate has turned to a colorless solution. I'm going to write that observation. So, for, me, for uh, I'm done doing the experiment, now I'm supposed to identify now the cation present in solution K and J. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to use the quantitative analysis table and I'm also going to use my observation. So for solution K, after adding a small portion of solution, after adding a small portion of solution J and a small portion of sodium hydroxide, I have to get a, a blue precipitate and after adding excess of uh, sodium hydroxide, the blue precipitate had remained the same. And the effect is ammonia. After adding a small portion of sodium hydroxide and of ammonia to the test tube, I had to get a blue precipitate. And after adding excess of ammonia into the, into the test tube, I had to find out that the blue precipitate had to turn to that blue solution. So according to these results here, I'm going to use my creative analysis table. And here the cation present in solution uh, J is copper 2. This is because copper 2 that is the only uh, ion that gives a blue precipitate. So for here on copper 2, uh, on the cation of copper 2, on the creative analysis table, it reads uh, the effects of aqua sodium hydroxide it then it has a right blue precipitate then it is insoluble in excess then the effect of uh, aqua ammonia a light blue precipitate soluble in excess giving a dark blue solution so these are my observations that i have and uh, in the same line with the quantitative analysis table this because here i have a blue precipitate and the blue precipitate that remains the same which means uh, insoluble in excess then here the effect is ammonia, I had uh, a blue precipitate, uh, then after adding excess, a blue precipitate had to turn to a dark blue solution, so it means it had, uh, it was soluble in excess, giving a dark blue solution. So the cation present in solution, J, is, is uh, a copper two ions. So this is how we identify the cation present in solution J. And to identify the, the cation present in solution K, I'm just going to use the same procedure. You just use the observ I'm, I'm going to use uh, the observations for solution K and uh, the quantitative analysis table. And these are uh, and for me to identify the cation, I'm going to And for me to identify the cation present in solution K, I'm going, I'm going to find out uh, uh, the observations that I have on the on the chalkboard and the quantitative analysis table. They must be similar. And uh, the cation present in solution K, uh, the zinc ions. This is because the zinc ions they produce a white precipitate. When you add a small portion, when you add a small portion of uh, solution K with sodium hydroxide, you, you are going to get a white precipitate. And when you add uh, excess of sodium hydroxide, you are going to get a colorless solution, which means soluble in excess. And when you add a small portion of sodium K with ammonia, you are going to get uh, a white precipitate. And when you add uh, excess of uh, ammonia into that cell test tube, you're also going to get the colorless solution, which means soluble in excess. And uh, here I can write down that the cation present in solution K are the zinc ions. So this is how you identify the cation uh, 
present this is how you identify the category of present instruction J, A, and K uh, using uh, this experiment and the most important thing that you are supposed to know is that when you are identifying a cation present in a solution or when you are identifying the, uh, the cations present in many solutions you just use two solutions you use sodium hydroxide and you use ammonia thank you very much